I wanted gifts, I would just look deep into my patient's eyes and act like you. Oh, I'm so sorry you're dying. This is moron. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors who are great at American accents. Impressive. Very nice. Mm. Let's see Paul Allen's card. For this list, we're looking at actors who were born and grew up outside of the United States, but who have the ability to sound like they are native sons and daughters of the red, white, and blue. Are there any actors on our list that you didn't realize were not American? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Margot Robbie If you were a fan of Australian soap operas in the late 2000s and early 2010s, then you've always known that Margot Robbie was Aussie born and raised. No, he, prom he promised me he would be home for a special night. However, the odds are that most people who know Robbie from her breakthrough role as Naomi LaPaglia in The Wolf of Wall Street and as Harley Quinn in a number of DC films were not watching Neighbors in 2008. Hi. Naomi. Nice to meet you. Naomi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You've got an awesome place here. I don't think I've ever been in a house this big before. And not only did Robbie have many of us thinking she was born in the USA, but her range of American accents is even quite impressive. LaPaglia doesn't sound like Quinn, and neither sounds anything like Tanya Harding, either. I never apologize for growing up poor, being a redneck, which is what I am. Number 9. Millie Bobby Brown There are probably stranger things, but for fans of the hit Netflix show, hearing Millie Bobby Brown speak in her natural British accent in interviews or in the Enola Holmes films is probably still pretty weird. The corset, a symbol of repression to those who are forced to wear it. But for me, who chooses to wear it, the bust enhancer and the hip regulators. Of course, that just speaks to how solid her American accent shops are. You ruined my day. Oh no. Did we embarrass you in front of your boyfriend? <laughs> I want you to say sorry to me. From Stranger Things to Godzilla vs. Kong, Brown's ability to come across as American is impressive, especially at such a young age. How young? Go back to 2015 when an 11 year old Brown put her British voice aside to appear in an episode of Modern Family. No, that's what you said about my mom's humidifier! Number 8. Andrew Lincoln. Doing a generic American accent is hard enough for some people, but for his role as Rick Grimes in The Walking Dead, Andrew Lincoln needed to get quite specific in his speech. She's good. She's good at turning off lights. Really good. Yeah. I'm the one he sometimes forgets. The series starts off in Atlanta, Georgia, which means Lincoln, as Grimes, didn't just need to lose his British accent. He also needed to add a little Southern drawl to his American voice. Broadcasting on Emergency Channel. We'll be approaching Atlanta on Highway 85. If anybody reads, please respond. To maintain the accent, Lincoln would keep his American voice going during filming, even when the cameras weren't rolling. In fact, he told The Independent back in 2013 that he was speaking in an American accent so much that his English accent didn't even feel natural anymore. I would have to say that one of the most memorable times was riding the horse into Atlanta, um, just because of the scale. Number 7. Damian Lewis Damian Lewis's first break came when Steven Spielberg cast him as U.S. Army Major Richard Winters in the 2001 miniseries Band of Brothers. It was also the first role that required him to speak with an American accent, and thankfully he was quite good at it. Who do you think would be taking over easy, sir? Moose Heiliger can command easy company. Lieutenant Heiliger would be my choice, sir. He's continued to show off his American voice on the small screen in high-profile series like Homeland and Billions. I think I, I showed up early on, you know, sounding like yeah. Joe Pesci and sort of quite excited about <laughs> doing a lot of yeah, 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 yeah. And on the big screen, he's shown some variety, even being able to tweak his standard American accent to do a pretty convincing Steve McQueen in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm going to tell you a story. She was engaged to him. Number 6. Christian Bale Christian Bale was born in Wales, but grew up most of his life in England. Either way, an American accent would seem to be the farthest thing from this guy's natural voice. And yet, can you remember the last time you saw Bale in a movie not speaking with an American accent? My name is Patrick Bateman. I'm 27 years old. I believe in taking care of myself. From Patrick Bateman in American Psycho to Batman, Bales made his living with his ability to transform himself and his voice for a role. And real-life portrayals haven't scared him either. 
Just look at and listen to Bale as investor Michael Burry in The Big Short and Vice President Dick Cheney in Vice. This is what I'm going to do. I am going to get a bank to make me one. And then I'm going to buy it. Number 5. Florence Pugh 2019 was kind of like Florence Pugh's American accent coming out party. I would have never have sprained my ankle. I have lovely small feet, the best in the family. But I can never go home again because I'm in such trouble. Early in the year, the English Pugh made some waves playing the wrestler Paige in Fighting With My Family. But she used her natural British accent for that role. You know, Paige is the name of a witch from a TV show that I like. However, with the release of Midsommar and Little Women later in 2019, Pew gained even more acclaim for her acting chops in two roles that both required her to sound American. And in case you were worried she couldn't do it again, well, don't worry, darling, because she can and she did. Most of the women here are from Philadelphia, or Baltimore, or Chicago. Number 4. Toni Collette Toni Collette broke out playing the lead in the film Muriel's Wedding from her native land of Australia. I can't go back, I'm a new person. However, while Collette might have grown up and begun her acting career down under, she's definitely made a name for herself stateside. Olive, um, <clears throat> Uncle Frank didn't really have an accident. What happened was he... And much of it has been thanks to her ability to sound like she was, to quote Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. Think Little Miss Sunshine and Krampus. In both films, Colette performs without even a hint of her Aussie roots coming through. She can even add a little rich person attitude to the accent if need be, as she did wonderfully in 2019's Knives Out. Detective Blank, you said the investigation is ongoing. You made a point of that. Do you suspect foul play? Number 3. Daniel Day-Lewis To say that Daniel Day-Lewis is great at doing American accents is quite possibly the understatement of the century. Day-Lewis didn't just put on a generic American accent for his roles that required it, he created a specific voice for each character. Bill the Butcher Cutting in Gangs of New York had a brash and bold New York voice. Ghoul. That's a good word. Ghoul gang slaughters. A fresh out outrage. Daniel Plainview is just as powerful, but with an accent that stems from a very different region of the country. Then, of course, there was Abraham Lincoln himself. And I can no longer use my war powers to just ignore the court's decisions like I sometimes felt I had to do. Might those people I freed be ordered back into slavery? The most powerful and important of them all, and the one that was the most crucial to get right. When things are working right, you feel yourself irresistibly drawn into the orbit of a, of a hitherto unknown world. Number 2. Daniel Kaluuya if you told fans of Jordan Peele movies that Daniel Kaluuya was British, they would probably respond with, Get out! Nope, he isn't. That was big. How big? Big. What'd it look like? Mm -hmm. But it's true. Born and raised in London, an American accent doesn't come naturally to Kaluuya. But it sure sounds like it does. Look, man. Thanks for looking at this it this weekend. Remember, no human food. Whether it's playing fictional characters in the Jordan Peele films or embodying the deputy chairman of the National Black Panther Party, Fred Hampton, in Judas and the Black Messiah, Kaluuya nails it perfectly. There's a man called a capitalist. No matter what color he is, black, white, brown, red, don't matter. They may have slightly different sounds and different tones, but they're definitely all American. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hugh Laurie They say that the house always wins, and in this case, we have to agree. Just think about it. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. If you're planning on doing that throughout the entire flight, please tell me now so that I can take a sedative. Can you believe that the British guy sitting next to Rachel on the plane in the season 4 finale of Friends is the same guy who played American Dr. Gregory House for eight seasons? In 2011, Laurie was inducted into the Guinness Book of World Records as the most watched leading man on television. So for many of us, Laurie's voice is that of Dr. House. We wouldn't have the Socratic method, the best way of teaching everything, apart from juggling chainsaws. Without Isaac Newton, we'd be floating on the ceiling. But as flawless as Laurie's American accent is, there's one phrase that scares him. A phrase that he will try to avoid at all costs. Hmm, 
Maybe that's why he's never been cast as Frank Sinatra in a movie. Honestly, the one that makes my heart sink when I see it in a script, surprisingly enough, is New York. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.